Hey, what is going on everyone? Mike here and today I'm doing a sales update video. The last one got such an amazing response. I decided we're going to do a second one. I mean, I've done them in the past, but I decided the last one was like, I just picked 10 items, talked about them. This time I'm picking 16. We're going to go over them, talk about each one. Thanks to the 2,500 people that viewed the last one. I appreciate it so much. Let's go ahead and get started. First up, we have these heavy duty men's carpenter insulated jeans. Now, the reason I purchased these was because of the quality and the fact that they were aligned with fleece. I personally haven't seen fleece lined jeans. I'm sure they're not super rare or anything, but they're obviously for a specific purpose. They're for people who work in the winter and need to stay warm or you know, the carpenters that are working in houses even when the weather sucks. And these were made by Faded Glory. I paid under five bucks for them. I believe around $3. It was a while ago, so I don't really remember off the top of my head. But I sold them for $21.95, and I actually feel like I underpriced these. I feel like I probably could have got closer to $30. However, I decided to try and sell them before winter. I just want, you know, I like to turn stock versus letting it sit for ages. But um, I still doubled my money or more after fees and shipping, so I'm happy with the sale. Definitely keep an eye out for these because I'm sure there's brands of these that are extremely expensive and people are willing to pay top dollar for them. This is one of my best sales on eBay in a long time. I got this vintage original penguin leather jacket. Now the lining on this jacket was absolutely beautiful. It was full of these rare books on bookshelves. It was this great graphic and that's the reason I bought it. I paid $30 for it. I ended up selling it for $150. But just know that if you see a leather jacket by the original penguin at all, they're worth a lot of money. I could only find a few solds and all of them had sold for over $100. I was gonna hold out and try to sell this for over 200. Then I knocked it down to 189 and actually a viewer messaged me and said that they wanted to buy it but they lived in the UK and uh, you know they offered 150 bucks because shipping and import fees were expensive and I agreed. And just so you guys know, if you're a viewer and you ever wanna buy anything, just message me. I will happily work with you and give you a good deal. Um, yeah, I would like to make a profit but I'm fine with making a minimal profit to help viewers out. In this case, they sent me an offer of 150. They said that's what they wanted to pay, and then I just accepted. But I mean, if you want to work with me on bundles and stuff, just send me a message. Next up, we have this new Detroit Pistons red, white, and blue Adidas cap. I paid like probably 199 for this. My local thrift store loves to price hats at like 198 or 199. And this hat was really unique. I couldn't find any like it. I couldn't find anything comparable to it sold. So it was kind of hard to price. I priced it in a reasonable range. I probably could have got $20 for it maybe, but uh, I got $16.95 for it. It shipped first class. So after fees and that, I probably quadrupled my money. And you know, it's something that doesn't take up a lot of space. It's nice looking. Any sports team's hats, you can usually get at least $10 to $15 for as long as they're in good condition. And a lot of times you can pick them up at flea markets or the thrift store for $1 to $2. So if you want quick flips, they're not bad. Um, there are certain brands and certain vintage hats you can get really good money for. I sold an old Hornets hat that was a snapback for a lot of money before. So keep an eye out for different sports hats. And they're easy to research because tons of them have been sold. Here I bought this right around when I bought that leather jacket. This is a London Fog double-breasted trench coat. Now I picked this up for $19, which is actually a lot. I typically wouldn't pay that much for some things. And it only sold for $50, so I probably maybe doubled my money after fees. The thing is, this jacket was just beautiful. Like I just couldn't pass it up. As you can see from the photo, it had the belt. It lines up really nice. It was just in good condition. And it sat for a while, but um, I feel like it was worth it. It added a nice product to my store. The person that got it was really happy, and that's what makes me happy. Always keep an eye out for trench coach. You'll need to do your research. But a lot of people pass these up because they're big and they're spacious. And, but the thing is, there's not that many competing sellers. Like trench coats aren't that popular, I feel like. And they, some of them bring big dollars. Like today I went thrifting and I picked up a camel for a trench coat, like an authentic camel for a trench coat. And I'm sure it'll bring big money. When I was looking it up, I noticed a bunch of people had fake camel fur up there. Uh, this was a smaller sale. I paid around five bucks for this suit coat. It's uh, made by Gaunt and it was tailored for Higby's. Higby's is a chain store that was apparently in the Cleveland area. Or I don't actually, I don't know if it's a chain. I know it was like a clothing department store. Um, I actually learned that from a viewer because I didn't know what it was when I originally bought this. But I bought it because it was blue wool. I, I tend to look for uh, all wool blazers just to see the kind of quality they have. A lot of times they could be worth good money. And the fact that it was blue, it was like this beautiful blue. 
I just decided I wanted to pick it up. I ended up probably tripling my money after fees and shipping, which makes me happy. But when you're looking for blazers, I, my general understanding is if something is tailored by a specific designer for places like Nordstrom or other stores, a lot of times they're worth a lot more money than just if they were for the department store without the, um, the designer. Here we have three Xbox controllers. You guys know I get tons of this stuff in. These were extras. I bought a bunch of Xbox 360s that I was gonna part with. These were added in. All of them were missing their backs and that bottom black controller didn't work at all. All of this is in the listing. But those top two controllers are pretty rare. Those aren't decals and those aren't custom made. Those are actually part of a specific bundle you could buy. And so there's not very many of them around. Because of that, they're worth good money. I accepted an offer of 45 bucks, but this just goes to show all the little extra accessories that are added in lots can be worth good, good money. Here we have a Guitar Hero 2 bundle. This is something that I bought from a viewer actually, and I bought a couple of them, but it was in such good condition. My gosh, it was almost like new. And as you can see, I got it for, or I sold it for $68 and it's selling brand new for 75 plus $4 shipping. So I got almost the exact brand new price for it for something that was indeed used. Next up, we have this Disney Universe game by, um, or by, for PlayStation 3. And I tend not to sell newer games unless they're for FBA. I paid probably a couple bucks for them, and I actually believe I bought these next few items from Chad, including this game. Here we have some military pants. These are, they actually had a really nice camo pattern. That photo is blurry, not because of my video. That's the actual fucking photo that someone uploaded to Amazon's listing. I have no idea how they got away with that. Anyways, I sold one pair of these for 46 bucks, and as you can see at the price range at the top, I'm above that. I still have one other pair to sell. I believe I paid $20. Um, I either paid 20 bucks a piece or 20 bucks for them both. I'm not sure, I don't really remember. Here's something interesting. This is a water filter. I bought this from Chad as well. I actually bought four of these. I sold three of them now for over $50 a piece. However, I actually had one return and then I replaced it with another one because one of them were, was faulty. It had a small hairline fracture in the back and it caused it to leak. So I took care of the customer and I actually just mailed that out tonight. I sent him a new one. So I ended up making like 150 bucks on the three before fees. Honestly, I don't even remember what I paid Chad for him, but I made a decent profit. Over here, you guys might remember from a wholesale lot I got a while ago. I paid 20 cents a piece for these. I now sold three of them at $9 a piece. So I made um, 27 bucks on three packs. And I can tell you one thing, um, I definitely made all my money back plus some just on three packs. That's why I sent them in. And that's why I told you guys I look for deals like that. Here we have a Yoda figure. Now, I wish I would have found this closer to Christmas because I probably could have got $40 for it, but I listed this early on in the year. I paid a few bucks for it, ended up selling it for $20. The crazy thing about this figure is it's only two inches tall. It's hard to tell from here, but it's like a really small, very, very small figure. Here's something cool, and this is something I, I preach about so much. People don't listen. If you find anything that's official Nightmare Before Christmas, do not pass it up. That stuff is worth such big money. I found, you know, like plush dolls and uh, mugs and shirts and hoodies. They all sell for a premium price. There's such a following behind Nightmare Before Christmas that everything you find is worth big money. I actually got this for $20 shipped, plus it had a t-shirt in the lot that I sold for another $15 or something. So I ended up quadrupling my money on the whole thing. But I sold the board game alone for 45 bucks through FBA. Here I have an original Game Boy that I sold for $54. Now it's important to note that you typically will not get $54 for an original Game Boy. However, I want to read the description here. Um, I listed it under collectible, very good. The reason I did that is because the used listing on this was so flooded, I would have been on page like eight. I put, it's in fantastic condition. It comes with the original battery cover and has no dead pixels. Every button and the sound works great as well. Now. And it's important to note all these things. It still had the battery cover. The screen had no dead pixels, which are very common. The sound worked. It was in good condition. It didn't have scratches. So I decided I was going to put it at a huge premium price. And as you can see, it managed to sell at 54 bucks. These typically sell for like $20, guys. And then lastly, I have Mischief Makers. This is a game I got in a recent lot. I actually sold this Merchant Fulfilled for $20. 
And, um, you know, if I priced out individual games from that lot, I paid way less than $20 for it, for sure, probably in the $1 or $2 range. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show that little things add up. I just kind of want to show you that I sell a good mix of different games and different things, board games. I look for anything on FBA that I can sell for at least double or triple my money. If I'm going to send it to FBA, I try to go for that. Um, on eBay, I, I'm willing to go with lower margins. I'm willing to sell stuff under $10. A lot of people aren't, but I'm a firm believer that small sales do add up. And around Christmas, I tend to stock up on video game manuals and list tons of those and um, accessories and stuff like that. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this sales update video. It seemed like you loved the last one, so I appreciate you watching so much. If you want to support the channel further, you can purchase through my Amazon affiliate link down below at no extra cost to you. And uh, I appreciate everyone that's been doing that. It helps so much. So thank you guys. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't. Plenty more great content to come. I'll see you guys very, very soon.